This is not a boxing gym. Ladies, gentlemen, can you guys hear me? Yes. You got to give 100% every time you step in this building. You got to give 100% because it shows. Trust me. People see the, the name Downtown Boxing Gym and they assume that it's just a boxing gym. Stand at attention and be ready to go. It's one of the country's top after-school programs tackling poverty, with a current wait list of 1,300. Boxing always has been the hook, but education has always been, you know, at the heart of it. You're not gonna come in here and just become some world champion boxer. You're gonna become a heavyweight uh, scholar. Can this boxing gym's bottom-up approach to education transform an entire community? Double jab! Double jab! Pivot! This is Catalyst a show about the change makers tackling our biggest problems. Detroit is a unique place. There's all kinds of hurdles put up to, to impede progress in a lot of different situations, a lot of different ways, a lot of different communities. Looking back at my own life, somebody created a narrative for me because I couldn't read or write. And so I was always acting out in, in various ways. I didn't have a role model. I didn't have somebody to look up to. I didn't have somebody to, to, to guide me in the right direction. I didn't have somebody to to counter these uh, accusations and these, these, these narratives that was being given to us about being dead or in jail. The school systems in um, inner cities are underfunded, we know that. Understaffed, we know that. But we gotta figure out ways. It's, it's our job as residents in this community to demand more, to be willing to sacrifice more, and to put in the work to change this plight. I started out in the beginning, like, okay, what's gonna be the hook? What's the draw? What's the thing? I said, okay, boxing is it. Kali knew boxing would get kids in the door, but the academic support was the real purpose of the gym. I didn't have a business plan or a business model. I just had the love in my heart and, and the drive to want to do what I was doing. So in 2007, Kali opened his doors to the youth of Detroit. Get in the fighting stance, man. Let's go. With your feet like this like you're ready to push something. If your feet not together, you're gonna fall all over the place. Your feet too far apart. Right hand. I think Zion's hardest challenge has been with his father being incarcerated. I think that's one of his biggest challenges. He doesn't like to talk about it a whole lot. He keeps it all on the inside. During quarantine, I kinda like got antisocial. I wasn't really talking to people for real. Zion, he doesn't talk too much. But that's one of the things that gives him so much strength and power. I've been going to DBG for seven years. When I meet people and I tell them about the gym, the first thing I would tell them is how supportive the gym is. One, two, three. DBG. Four, five, six. Seven. There's academics. There's experiments, there's field trips, opportunities, scholarships. Yeah, if you want to show me your flipbook on the way out, please feel free, feel free. I love that you put yourself in here. Awesome job. Books before boxing. Before they do boxing, they, they make sure that their grades are on point. Do you know which one is the x-axis and which is the y-axis? They have tutors for us daily to help us with homework. If we need help, they're there for it. It seems like you're doing really good work. For a lot of kids, they may not have internet access. They may not have access to uh, technology. You know what I mean? So this is a place like a launching platform, I say. You know, it's a place where you can go to get the resources you need to be the best version of yourself. Like I said, right now he's maintaining a 3.8. So DBG has pretty much kept him on point. Hands up, make sure that hand come right back. When I got back to the gym, I kind of got more interactive with people, more outspoken. 30 jumping jacks, go. Too. You can actually put him in a leadership position. You know what I mean? Because now he's, he's got the information so he knows what needs to be done. Boxing positions. A lot of the newer kids, they look up to me as a role model. 
make sure they're doing the right thing. Listen, this is one of the most important things you're gonna need to know about self-defense. Kali's like a, like a big brother. You know, he, 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 he makes sure you're in place. Make sure you're in check. Make sure you're always doing the right thing. That's one of my things, you know, when people say, um, bad kids and all this type of stuff. I, I always tell people like, man, I don't see bad kids. I see kids who haven't been heard. I always listen to the kids. I always have my ear to it. You know, it's open. I'm listening. It's got to be trust involved. I trust them. They trust me. It's kind of inspirational to see how he turned his whole life around how he was going down the wrong path, and I'll look at him. Sometimes he goes around and asks people, what do we want to be in the future? And he say, this could be your future lawyer. This could be your future architect. This could be your future engineer. I've seen this organization growing beyond this. You know, like, we're not doing victory laps around here. Everybody gets up every day and work hard. I think Zion has a unlimited future. I see him soaring really high, really high. DBG currently has a 100% graduation rate for its students. If more cities adopt this approach, it could reduce poverty and help students realize their full potential. No doubt in my mind, he's gonna be number one. He's gonna be at the top of his class. With the help of DBG and our family, he's gonna be at the top of his class. Like, this is global, man. You know, one of these guys may change the world. One of these young ladies may change the world. We have to keep pushing every single day. I see myself in all of these kids and all of these people that work here. One family. <laughs>